All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Drama High Book Club. Um, it's September 10th, 2011, and we are here with ahead, Summer. You... Hey, y'all. What's up? She's the original OG, always here, never, never fails to come to the book club meetings. Um, today, apparently, we had a little mix-up in communication, and the book club was not advertised properly, but we'll make sure that that's fixed next time. I have to be more vehement in checking up with Barnes & Noble's site and just making sure that everything is always advertised. But anyway, so we are starting today at the end of Volume 2, Second Chance. Watch your books up, watch your books up. Show them your book because hers, this is, yes, look at that. Look at, I'm just saying, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. And then even her Volume 3, which we're going to move into, look at that. Now that is a red book. You hear me? Reread and reread over and over and over again. Um, I really enjoyed catching up because, let me to be honest, as you can see, I'm going through volume one all over again. Um, and the reason was is because a lot of what happens between Jade and KJ in this volume kind of plays out in volume two, second chance, and then on into volume three because Jade is getting um, a lot of flack from both, uh, well, a lot of heat, I should say, good attention, sort of. Not with KJ, really. But anyway, getting all this attention between KJ and Jeremy. And so we were trying to decide who we were going to deal with in Second Chance. Do we give KJ a second chance or should Jeremy give her a second chance? Because there were a lot of things that happened in this book, right? Yes. And so do you want to give a summary? Um, in Second Chance, um, in the beginning, Jay was just beginning with Jeremy and they were getting along. But then KJ, he was, try he was still on Jay's shot trying to get her back. And um, Jeremy got a civil weed on campus. No, no, he didn't. I never really had. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> and um, in the end, Jade and Jeremy eventually got together. You know. They did. They did. But you know, KJ didn't go out without a fight, did he? No. No, he didn't. He you they know had, had a fight they, at the moment. Well, yeah, well, him and Jeremy. Yeah, yeah, they had a little bit of a of a, of a scuffle, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but what were Jeremy and Jay doing at the moment? They were, I think they were shopping. Okay, and he, this was the first time that we encountered this issue, or not, it shouldn't really be an issue, but Jade is not used to being treated so well, right? And so she becomes a little what? Used to it. Well, no, she becomes suspect at first, right? Mm -hmm. Of Jeremy, like, why are you buying me all these nice things? Yeah, and recently I had a friend ask me that. I went out on a date, and, you know, um, it was it was nice. I'd never had that before uh or I hadn't had them in a very long time, probably since junior high, high school. But just, you know, took me on a trip and paid for everything and everything. And I had this same conversation with him. Like, why why is it that sometimes we, especially as black women, don't expect, you know, all of these niceties to be had? And when they do happen, then we become suspects. So those are some of the issues and topics that we're going to talk about today in the Drama High Book Club um, with Jeremy, the relationship between her, um, he and Jade, and how she's trying to get used to you know, this whole white boy thing, and then the fact that uh, her friends really are giving her a lot of slack, right? Mm-hmm. Talking about her because she's dating the white boy. Because she's dating the white boy. And I think pretty much that's what KJ is dealing with, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, he's, he can't handle the fact that not only does she not really want to be with him anymore, but that he, what? That he lost to white boy. He lost to white boy. I love it in the mall when he's talking about dude, 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 you know, and then what is Ka I say do all the time. And you know, that's fine. That's mm -hmm. fine. But the way he's saying it is very mm -hmm. what? It's very like vulgar or so. Very rude. Very mm -hmm. rude. Um, and not only that, when his boys get with him, I can't remember if it was C-Money or Dell, but they say something. It was something. both of them. But remember they said, it was both of them, definitely. But remember there was one scene where he was saying, lose the zero and get back with the Negro? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That actually happened. Somebody said that to me, and I was like, "Really, really?" That's I think that was C money. Was that C money? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, we'll find it. We'll get back to y'all um, and catch you up at the end of the at the end of the book club. Hopefully, some more people trickle in, even though it um, it would be a surprise. But you know, we'll always be here every second Saturday of the month at the Barnes and Noble on Mount Zion Road in Morrow, Georgia, and we'll check right back in. All right, peace. Bye. Bye. Okay. So to wrap it up in the summer. Okay. Like what happened? Right. What we yeah. So wrap it up. Jade chooses who? Jade chooses Jeremy over KJ. Why? Because KJ he's he just he pressures her too much and he causes too much drama for her. 
and how can he cause drama? How can sweet KJ, star basketball player, just finest black man in South Bay High, how can he cause drama? Because he just chooses all the wrong, wrong women. All the wrong life. women. And not only that, he's pressuring her about what? Sex. Okay, and is Jay ready to have sex? No. No, she's not. She's not ready by any means to engage in that type of relationship. And does KJ understand that? No. No. He doesn't. He, he gives a false impression, right? Mm -hmm. He just, he's used to just getting what he wants. So when she just says no, it's like, what? Just told me no. Like, saying no to me? <laughs> Tim Daddy? Me? OG KJ? No, you can't say no to me. There are too many, what does he say? There are too many what? There are too many. It's crazy. He's like, there are too many other girls. Too many other girls in the world. And she's like, well then go get them. <laughs> go on. Do that. Be that. That's when they broke up. Right and there. that's when they broke up. I'm Time looking at volume Andy. one. A jump. Okay. You see my children on my alarm clock. They're hungry. And oh my goodness. Miss Divine is about to go away and Mama Logan's about to come out in just a moment. Um, so basically, Jade helps out Jeremy. Jeremy and she established that they're going to be together by the end of the book. KJ tries his best to work his magic, but it, it's just not working on Jade. And not only that, um, Misty continuously tries to instigate uh, the relationship between them. And I think Jay finally sees that KJ is influenced too much by who? By, by everyone else. By His everyone friends. else. Right. And he, get, he starts to play into this. Like the circle or what they're saying. He's doing what they say. Right. To um, get what he wants mm -hmm. out of it. And he's playing this role, right? And then we talked about that role playing, right? Mm -hmm. And so just like Jade has her two friends around her who are not always... They're not always giving her good advice. They're pressuring her and doing the wrong thing. Because they want her to do what? They want her to do the wrong... They want her to do... They, they want, want her to do KJ. They want her to, do KJ. <laughs> <laughs> they want her to give KJ a second chance. That's the title of the book, right? But she ends up at the end of the book asking whom for a second chance. Jeremy. Jeremy. Because she realizes that with KJ, you know, dedicating the song to her and, K and Jeremy and her on a date. And, you know, she's really trying to get into the groove of just being a friend Jeremy. to Jeremy. Right. And mm -hmm. to being, getting to know him, right? Jeremy. But KJ keeps doing what? Just throwing in his little throwing in the salt. two cents. Just throwing it, throwing it. Salt in my game. That's one of the chapters. Yeah, that's chapter 16, last chapter. Salt in my game. And so her girlfriends are throwing salt in her game because they don't think that she should be with the white boy. And then everybody's telling her to do the opposite. But at the end of the day, she has to do what? What she thinks is best for her. What she thinks is best for her in all situations. That's my girl, Jay. And so that's when she gets further into her powers, deeper into who she really is, um, her legacy, her powers, and just all around what she wants out of life. And I hope that Jeremy doesn't sleep because in this book, who's reintroduced? Ra. Ra and Nigel. Ra he can't and Nigel. fall off. Jeremy can't fall off his game. Yeah, he can't fall off his game, son, because Ra is on his, trust me. And with Nellie getting nominated to be the first black homecoming princess and all the things that are going on with her and her friends, Jade's really got to work it out for her, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so when we reconvene next month for the Drama High Book Club here at Barnes & Noble in Morrow, Georgia, which I will make sure that they advertise properly on their site um, as well, we will reconvene and discuss Drama High, Volume 3, Jade's Legacy. All right, this is Miss L. Devine signing off and... Summer Reading. All right. Peace. Peace.